In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Acts chapter 11. And let's go to Acts chapter 11 now. Let's see what the church says in Jerusalem. Now, what's happening here between Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 15? It's all tied together in the book of Acts of the Apostles. So, so right after Paul's conversion, it, we have this report of how Peter... Uh, had these visions and understood, you shall not call on clean what I have called clean, that the Gentiles will be co-heirs with the Jews in the new and eternal covenant. And this is all preparing us for the council in Acts chapter 15. It's showing us how the Holy Spirit's working through the church. So let's go to chapter 11. Are you ready? Now the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Now, who is the party of circumcision? It's kind of a mystery, but it appears that as time goes on, it's a party of Jews and Gentiles who want to impose circumcision as well as other laws of ritual purity on those who are converts to the faith. And so here they are, what, the, what they're doing is they're criticizing Peter because he's around who? Who's he around? Gentiles. What are you doing hanging out with Gentiles, Peter? You're hanging out with unclean people. What are you doing hanging out with them? Now, this is very important, this little point here, because in Acts chapter, or in uh, Galatians chapter 2, St. Paul is going to get upset with Peter. Uh-oh. The one time Paul really let Peter have it. If you guys you know, want to find out what happened, Peter for one moment started to separate from the Gentiles and only hang out with Jews. And Paul got extremely angry because he said, you're confusing people. The Gentiles are supposed to be co-heirs. I know you're trying to evangelize that group, but if you're separating from them, you're going to confuse them. And so it's, uh, it's the one time when Paul really criticized Peter. It's, it's Galatians chapter 2. And you see, Peter was not even, for just a moment, he started to not follow his own teaching for just a moment. So it's really, it's important if you look at chapter 11 here, because you can see Peter getting criticized, getting criticized. And maybe and sometimes when you get criticized, what happens? It gets to you, right? And then you, you give in maybe a little bit. And so don't, don't let the criticism pull you away from Christ. So look at verse 3. It says, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? But Peter began and explained to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, in a and in a trance I saw a vision, something descending like a great sheet. And so he goes through and he explains his vision. But I want to go down a few verses here. I want to go down to verse 10. So chapter 11, verse 10, he says, This happened three times and all was drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to come, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brethren also accompanied me, and we entered a man's house. And so he ta he's going to tell them about, about Cornelius. And if you go to verse 15, it says this, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance unto life. Now, I, the, the verse that I love here, which is very important, When they heard this, they were what? 
They were silent. Now, this uh, phrase, you will see it again in Acts chapter 15. When you get to Acts chapter 15, right around verse 10 or 11, Peter speaks at the Council of Jerusalem, and when he finishes, everybody is silent. It's the exact opposite of what happens. The church teaches and it says this is wrong and that is wrong and you hear murmuring and grumbling and, and I say, oh, that they would just be silent and do the Lord's will, right? But, you know, it really is kind of ironic. And I, I sometimes like to say the Catholics are true Israelites sometimes, you know? But, but it's a very important phrase. When they heard it, they were silent. They accepted it. They understood what God was doing through, through Peter and also how the Gentiles were co-heirs. And notice the phrase also that God has granted to them repentance unto life. So it's, they receive the Holy Spirit, but is it enough to just receive the Holy Spirit and you're fine? What else do we have to do? We have to repent. We have to repent. Okay, so let's go to verse 19. Are you ready? So now, those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to none except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Greeks, also preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number that believed turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch, where he came and saw the grace of God. He was glad, and he exhorted them to all remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a large community was added to the Lord, so Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for who? To look for Saul. Notice how he's called Saul here. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large company of people in Antioch. The disciples were for the first time called Christians. Verse 26. Now, this is really amazing right here because... Just as Peter is relating to others how the Gentiles are co-heirs, suddenly you see Paul and Barnabas preaching. Originally, the church is going out, it's being persecuted, it's preaching only to Jews, but then they're starting to preach to the non-Jews, the Greeks. The word Greeks is a sometimes phrase used for non-Jews. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're from Greece, but they're now starting to preach to the Greeks, to non-Jews. And so Paul goes to Antioch, which is in Syria today, by the way. And what does he do? He spends a whole year there. Can you imagine that? A whole year-long retreat? Can you imagine how, how that would have been with St. Paul and Barnabas? And so let's go to verse 27. Now in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. And this took place in the days of Claudius. And the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brethren who lived in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. You know, so what's really amazing here is the care for the church in Jerusalem. In Paul's letters, he takes up a collection for the church in Jerusalem. And here they're, they're sending support to those who are in Judea, right around Jerusalem. So in Acts chapter 11, you really see this, these, this amazing change happening. Peter's relating to others what happened and how he now knows that Gentiles are co-heirs. And then you see the Lord working through St. Paul. Now, to finish, why do you think it just happened to be St. Peter and St. Paul, the two pillars of the early church. And you notice it right in chapter 11, how the Lord is working through both of them to understand the most important teaching in the early church, which is the Gentiles are co-heirs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
I give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for this opportunity in the short time to walk through the Acts of the Apostles. Help us to take time to read through this book. And as we do, Lord, show us how to be guided by the Spirit and show us how to share the gospel with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord.